Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. We have covered ADC, DHT temperature sensors, SD card, RTOS in the previous videos. Today, in this video, I will combine them all. This video will cover, how to save data in the SD card, which will communicate through SPI. This data will be collected from the potentiometer, which is connected via ADC, and the DHT11 temperature sensor. And all this will work with free RTOS. So let's start by creating the project in Cube IDE first. I am using STM32F446RE, but you can use for other microcontrollers too. I will also upload the code for STM32F103 controller. Let's see the connection first. SD card MISO is connected to MISO. MOSI to MOSI. Clock to clock. And CS pin is PB6 in my case. DHT11 data pin is connected to PA0. And potentiometer middle pin is connected to PA1. All of them are connected to same 5 volts. Let's first turn on the ADC channel 1 for potentiometer. Enable the continuous conversion mode. Three cycle time is ok for us. Now enable the FAT FS for SD card. Leave everything to default. Enable the free RTOS, and again leave everything as it is. Here I am selecting the external crystal for the clock. Enable SPI for connecting the SD card. Also select the CS pin as output. In my case I am using PB6 as the CS pin. Select time base other than Cystic. This is because of free RTOS. Timer 1 will be used for the periodic delay. I will set it up later, after setting the clock. Timer 7 will be used for microsecond delay, for the DHT11 sensor. Select the UART, so that we can see the output on the serial console. Let's set the clock now. I am using external crystal, which is of 8 MHz. And I want the controller to run at 60 MHz. Note that, but the APB clocks are also at 60 MHz. Now, let's set the timer 7 first. Keeping prescaler as 60, will divide the APB clock to 1 MHz. That means, each count in auto reload register will take 1 microseconds. Set the auto reload register at max value. This is basically the maximum microseconds, that we can count up to. Now let's go to the timer 1. This time, I am setting prescaler as 60,000. This will divide the APB clock to 1000 Hz. Here, each count in auto reload register will take 1 millisecond. Setting auto reload register to 2000 means that, it will count for 2000 milliseconds. Enable the update event, and turn on the interrupt. Guys I hope you understood the difference between the setting of timer 1, and timer 7. In timer 7, each count of auto reload register takes 1 microsecond, and inside the code, we will not count up to the full AR value. We will just count up to, however long a microsecond delay we need. But in timer 1, each count takes 1 millisecond, and we are allowing it to count up to the full auto reload register value, and that's why it will create a periodic delay of 2 seconds. Let's go to the SPI now. Divide the clock, 
such that the speed remains somewhat near 2 megabits per second. Also set the PA0 as input for the DHT11 sensor. This completes our setup. Now just save it to generate the code. Here is our main.c file. First of all, I will remove the cmsys related functions. So just copy the rtos functions into the main code, and comment out the cmsys. I am going to remove all the default task related functions. Let's include the library files into our project now. You can get these after downloading the code, from the link in the description. Include the dht11 and file handling.h files. You need to make modifications here, if you are using other instances, or pins. Also define your CS pin here. You can change the SPI, if you are using any other instance of it. As instructed here, we need to copy this, and paste it in the interrupt.c file. And this one should go inside the cystic handler's interrupt function. I am using timer 6 for the cystic. Also change the UART, if you are using any other. Now we need to make modifications in the user disk io.c file. Just watch carefully. You can replace this entire file, with the one from my code also. Let's write the code now. I am creating three task handlers first. They are for DHT task, SD card task, and the ADC task. Create a handler for the semaphore, which will be used in the DHT task. Now the task functions, where we will write the task codes. Also define the variables to hold the ADC value, and temperature, and humidity values. Now inside the main function, first of all, we will create the files in the SD card. So, mount the SD card, format it, create the ADC file, create temp file, and unmount the card. Now we will create the binary semaphore. 
Remember that this semaphore must be given first, and we will not give it here. Now, create the tasks. I am creating three tasks here. DHT task will be of lowest priority. We will use the semaphore to execute this task. SD card will be of highest priority because nothing should preempt it, or else the volume could fail. And at last, start the scheduler. Before starting the scheduler, we need to start the timers also. Start timer 7 in normal mode, and timer 1 in the interrupt mode. Now let's write the task functions. In ADC task, we will simply start the ADC. Poll for the conversion. Get the value. And stop the ADC. This task will run every 500 milliseconds. Now the DHT task. Here, we will acquire the semaphore first. As the semaphore will be given every 2 seconds, we will wait for 2 and a half seconds for the semaphore. If it doesn't acquire, we will print this string. Or else, the DHT11 read function will read the data, and save it in the temperature, and humidity. Note that we will not release the semaphore here. And finally, we will write the ADC and DHT data to the SD card. Index variable is used for indexing. Before using sprintf function, use the malloc for allocating the memory. We will mount the SD card, update the files, and unmount the SD card. This task will run every second. Now, we need to release the semaphore periodically. And you already know, that when we give semaphore from an ISR, we need to use the high priority task switching also. This completes everything, let's build this code, and debug it. I have put those variables in the live expression, so that we can watch them. I will first show you my SD card. There are two files in it. I will delete these files. And create new files, just to show you that, format SD function also works. For now, the format function only removes the files, and any directory will still be there. I am putting the card back in the module. Let's run this now. You can see the values here. There seems to be some error in opening the temp file. Let's take a look at the code again. It's all right here. Okay, I have created directory by mistake. Let's change this to file. Build, and debug again.
Now the output is perfect. The files are updating as expected. This whole updating data works every one second. Take a look at the ADC value. I will reduce it. And now I will increase it again. I am touching the temperature sensor now. You can see the rise in the value. Ok, let pause it, and it's now the time to check our SD card. You can see the two files here. See how the ADC values decreased, and they increased again. Just as I changed it. Same thing with the temperature also. It's pretty much consistent, but then increases a bit. So the data is saved properly. Let's see what we get in the output now. Obviously, error in everything here. This is because the card is not inserted into the module. This is it for the video guys. I hope you understood everything we discussed today. You can download the code from the link in the description. Be safe, and have a nice day.